Mike. Kyle, stand by. Attention, clear the track. The track's now clear for the finish. Two, start one for Kyle. My name is Kyle Brown, I'm 23 years old and I'm competing in the sport of skeleton for the United States of America. I'm originally from Concord, New Hampshire. I went to school at Concord High School and then later went to uh, Springfield College in Massachusetts. While I was at Springfield, I was contacting my strength and conditioning coach about a possible internship with the United States Olympic Training Center up here in Lake Placid, New York. He actually said that he got to try skeleton uh, one of the skeleton experience rides that they do here at Mount Van Hovenberg. So the sport of skeleton, basically it's a single man sport. It's head first, so you're laying on your stomach on basically a lunch tray. On top of two runners, and your chin's just hovering about an inch or two above the ice. We hit speeds from anywhere from about 70 to 85 miles an hour depending on the track and depending on where we are in the world. Skeleton is a very power specific sport where the start is all almost track based where it's a sprint start, sprint for about 30 meters or so and then you dive onto your sled and then the rest is all steering just like NASCAR down about a mile long track anywhere from about 16 to 20 curves. Basically, I like to tell people it's extreme sledding. So this part of the sled is where we actually lay down. Um, our head is down on this end, and our knees and feet are on this end. Uh, this is the saddle right here. This is what kind of keeps us on the sled. Um, what's kind of funny that I didn't really know at first when I got into the sport is where my hands were. Uh, when I first thought about the sport, I thought my hands were just down at my sides. Um, with this specific saddle, my hands are actually underneath my legs, holding onto these bars right here. So this is the bottom of our sled. Um, this is the bottom of our pod um, that's just above the ice. And these are the, probably the most important aspect of the sport, in my opinion, are the runners. What we do is we'll sand these runners before races and uh, basically polish them up to get them as fast as we possibly can. And a really nicely taken care of set of runners will make a huge difference on the ice compared to somebody who doesn't take care of it. For each time we slide, we set a rock to our runners. Uh, basically what the rock does is it creates a bow in the runner. So as I uh, screw in this bolt here, it creates a bow in the runner. And as I turn, this uh, part of the runner will actually kind of extend out, uh, creating more bow in that runner. Don Haas, who is the development coach here uh, for 
the U.S. team, gave me his contact information. I contacted him, saying that I was interested in the sport and wanted to know a little more about it. Uh, upon a couple different conversations, he invited me up to do a combine. I came up to Lake Placid in 2012, competed in the combine. It's a strength and speed combine full of sprints and lifting. Scored enough points to earn myself an invitation back here to Lake Placid to do a skeleton sliding school. The skeleton sliding school took place in November of 2012 and basically it was a week long of getting probably the biggest rush of my life. So my first run, I had no idea what to expect. There was almost zero coaching leading up to our first run and that was for a reason. It's because Don Haas has been doing this for a long time and he knows what he's talking about. Basically, we got to the starting line. He said, okay, lay on your sled, loosen your legs, loosen up, try to stay relaxed. And he gave us a push down. He said, hopefully we'll see you at the bottom. It is a dangerous sport. Certain tracks have different types of dangers to them. Here in Lake Placid, there's this one turn. It's uh, the exit of curve 12 that gets everybody every time. So this is the infamous exit of curve 12 and entrance into curve 13 where most of the carnage happens on uh, Lake Placid's track. Right by this timing eye here you can see the wall from where people come off of 12 and take a hit here. It's kind of all down into cement. It's a tough exit to get and uh, you'll take some big hits there. Uh, I've had my fair share of bumps and bruises throughout this experience so far. Can't wait for more to come to be completely honest because it's fun learning from those mistakes. At the end of that week, we got to meet with Don to see how we were doing and what our future plans were. And uh, Don said that he really liked what he saw and how I was sliding that week. So he invited me back to start training full time. Typical morning, wake up around seven, I'll start my first workout, whether it's a speed workout um, as far as almost like track sprinting or a strength workout in the weight room. Once we get up to the track, we have to do all of our equipment checks and make sure that everything's gonna be uh, surviving the trip down. All right, so almost every practice we like to do track walks and we'll usually do it from top to bottom, uh, that way you kind of get to walk and you get to feel on the bottom of your feet where you'll get these elevation changes. Okay, so we're here at turn 10. Uh, this is called Shady 2. These letterings are a big part of where we kind of try to get our lines to be. Um, there are different ways to steer this curve. Some people like to curve up through the letters. Some people like to get early height and go along the letters. We have to do like a track warm up in order to get ready for each trip. We'll usually take maybe two or three runs a day. Technically, it's about three minutes of sliding. But what's tough is the pressures that your body feels as you're going down this track, let alone how anxious you are and your heart's racing every single time. It's not like it's a walk in the park. We'll hit probably a maximum of about four Gs at the end of the track, um, which is basically four times your body weight or four times gravity took a long time to strengthen our necks in order to be able to handle these G's. Usually they'll kind of push your face right against the ice and you'll kind of drag there for a little bit. Once you kind of get those G's under control, it makes everything a lot easier as far as being able to see the track. It really takes a toll on your body, so we have to give our bodies plenty of rest. We only slide five days a week, but we train all seven days. Uh, sometimes we get an occasional Sunday off to kind of do whatever you want, whether it's go skating at the Oval or possibly get in a cross-country ski or some type of active, um, active rest, I guess. This is the U.S. National Championship coming through Shady 2, March Madness, Mount Van Openberg style. We have races today, tomorrow, I was a forerunner for the North America Cup, and I was also got to compete in the U.S. National Championships just a couple weeks ago. Touch to clear the track. The track is now clear from the finish to start one. Start number one for Kyle. Here we go, Kyle. Come on, Kyle. Good push. Come on. Nationals was a great experience. Being surrounded by the World Cup sliders definitely kind of increased my uh, anxiousness for it. So there's one section in the track where it's basically the make it or break it point. Um, it's called the Devil's Highway. Yeah, it starts at curve four and ends at curve seven. 
throughout the nationals and my training leading up to that, I was really trying to focus on nailing those curves. The first day it was so slow that it was tough to hit those curves exactly where you wanted to. Um, but the second day when the ice sped up and I was back to that normal speed I have been used to going, all of a sudden my devil's highway was phenomenal. I was able to put together two solid runs and move my way up into 15th position. I actually caught a couple guys in order to place where I did. Overall, it was a great experience to compete against some of the Olymp future Olympic athletes in the sport of skeleton. So right now I'm in the development program for the United States Skeleton and Bobsled Federation. There's multiple tiers to the program. The next tier up is the North American Cup Circuit. It's made up of four tracks in North America. It's Lake Placid, it's Park City, Utah, it is Whistler, Canada, and it's also Calgary, Canada. Ahead of that is uh, the Europa Cup, which is a European tour, and you hit a bunch of tracks over in Europe. And then after that, it's the ICC, or the Intercontinental Cup Series. Uh, the ICC is done both here in North America and over in Europe. And then obviously you have the World Cup guys, which are the top three in the U.S. So one of the toughest things about this sport is because the U.S. government doesn't fund the Olympics, we're all self-funded, uh, self-funded athletes. We pay for our training. We pay for our staying. We pay for food. We pay for everything. And what's really tough is that our job is training. In the off season, we're able to work, but that's only about five or six months out of the year, maybe. And of course, I had to pick the sport that was the most expensive, I think. <laughs> this summer, I'll be hopefully buying a sled for almost $4,000. And that's just the sled. That's not even counting the runners. Usually, you have about three pair with you when you travel. Each pair is about $700. So you're looking at about $2,100 just for a set of runners. Already we're well over $6,000 and we don't even have protection for our head. So I recently just purchased a new helmet. Uh, this helmet, it's a Uvex. It's made from, uh, or made in Germany. Uh, the biggest difference between this helmet that I have here and my old helmet is probably the lens. This lens has a nice clear coating on top and then on the inside lens, um, it actually has an anti-fog covering to it. That way we can breathe as we go down and the shield won't fog up at all. Um, another great thing about this helmet is where the lens actually ends up here on my forehead. Because it's so high up here, I'll be able to look out the tops of my eyes to uh, spot up my entrances and exits to curves, um, which makes a huge difference in your field of vision. So what's tough about this experience is obviously being away from my family and friends. What I wasn't expecting was being up in Lake Placid in New York, which kind of isn't really around a lot. It's such a tight-knit community that it made it feel like I was at home. The athletes I train with are some of my best friends and just instant connections with these people. Just walking downtown, there's so much history behind this venue and having the 1932 and the 1980 Olympics hosted in Lake Placid is something huge and something that the town prides itself on. In January, I wasn't able to afford housing up here and one of the local churches, they house athletes for free. So I got to stay in the basement of a church for an entire month for no rent. And all we did was shovel for them and try to help out as much as we can around the church. But that's what they like to do is they like to help us out because they know we're in a tight situation. This started out as just trying to get a new experience. I wanted to see how it went and I had no plans to stay here too long until I fell in love with the sport on that first run. My big, big goal is to make uh, one of the Olympic Games. In order to make that goal, hopefully one day a reality, I'm going to need support from family, friends, whether it's just letters in the mail um, telling me that they're following and they can't wait to see how I do in a certain race or whatever it may be. Um, having that constant support of my family first off, plus my friends and close relatives, is something that will really keep me driven. The competitor in me wants to do as well as I physically possibly can. So I'll do anything it takes, um, whether it's staying at a church for an entire month or bussing tables at night, working three jobs in the off season, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. Through my coaching, my training, and my personal ambition, I feel like there's nothing that can hold me back from trying to chase my dreams to hopefully one day make it to that 2018 Olympic game in Pyeongchang, South Korea. 
This is Nitro Circus, the kids love. <laughs> Attempting the skeleton, push start. Let's see what happens. Lock and load, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do it like a skeleton. If you're gonna run with two hands, you gotta have your feet off to the sides. You're gonna run like this. A couple steps with one hand. See how it's off. Okay. okay.